Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what's meant by hydrogen bonding. You should then be able to describe how hydrogen bonds give water its unusual properties. In the last few videos we've looked at intermolecular forces. We've looked at both London forces and permanent dipole-dipole interactions. In this video we're looking at a special type of intermolecular force. This is called hydrogen bonding. I'm showing you here a molecule of hydrogen fluoride. Now there are two key points to this molecule. Firstly, in hydrogen fluoride, the fluorine atom has three lone pairs of electrons. Secondly, as we saw in a previous video, fluorine is the most electronegative element, so this strongly attracts the pair of electrons in the covalent bond. This means that the molecule is polar, with the hydrogen atom having a positive charge. OK, I'm showing you here two molecules of hydrogen fluoride. At this point, the positive hydrogen atom on the right hand molecule is attracted to the lone pair of electrons on the fluorine atom of the left hand molecule. This attraction is called a hydrogen bond and I'm showing that here. Now it's really important that when you draw a hydrogen bond it must run from the hydrogen atom directly to the lone pair of electrons. Hydrogen bonds are the strongest type of intermolecular force and for hydrogen bonding to take place we need two conditions. Firstly, we need a hydrogen atom bonded to a strongly electronegative element. Secondly, the electronegative atom must have at least one lone pair of electrons. Now what this means is that we find hydrogen bonding with fluorine, oxygen or nitrogen. All three of these elements are strongly electronegative and all three have at least one lone pair of electrons. I'm showing here hydrogen bonding in water molecules. Again, notice how I've drawn the hydrogen bond directly to the lone pair of electrons. And here's hydrogen bonding in the ammonia molecule. Now in the exam you could be asked to draw hydrogen bonding, so it's really important that you pay close attention to these diagrams. In the next section we look at how hydrogen bonding affects the properties of water. OK, now one idea you need to understand is that hydrogen bonding can have a significant effect on the properties of molecules. I'm showing here water and hydrogen sulfide. Both of these compounds have got two hydrogen atoms covalently bonded to a group 6 element. In the case of water, the hydrogen atoms are bonded to oxygen, which is the second most electronegative element. This means that water molecules undergo hydrogen bonding. Because of this, when we boil water, it takes a great deal of energy to break the hydrogen bonds. This means that water has a relatively high boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius. The hydrogen bonds also mean that water has a relatively high melting point. Now in the case of hydrogen sulfide, the hydrogen atoms are bonded to sulfur. The electronegativity of sulfur is very similar to hydrogen, so this means that hydrogen sulfide cannot form hydrogen bonds. And hydrogen sulfide has a much lower boiling point of minus 60 degrees Celsius. Now as well as having a relatively high boiling point, water has some other unusual properties due to hydrogen bonding. I'm showing you here an iceberg. Now water is very unusual because the solid form, in other words ice, is less dense than the liquid form. And because of this, ice floats on the surface of water. Now there are very few examples of substances where the solid is less dense than the liquid. We can explain this unusual property of water by looking at hydrogen bonding. In liquid water, the water molecules are moving randomly. Sometimes the water molecules are close together, and sometimes they're further apart. Hydrogen bonds are constantly being formed and broken. Now as we cool water down, the molecules move more slowly. As we reach the freezing point of water, which is 0 degrees Celsius, the water molecules arrange themselves into an ordered structure. This ordered structure is ice, and this is stabilised by the network of hydrogen bonds. In ice, the water molecules are further apart than in liquid water. This makes ice less dense than liquid water, and because of this, ice floats on the surface of water. Now this is really important for organisms that live in water. And that's because the ice insulates the water below, preventing the water from freezing completely. OK, so hopefully now you can describe hydrogen bonding and explain how this leads to the unusual properties of water. <laughs> 